So it's July 5th, 2018, and I wanted to take a look at something me and Chris Moore talked about in an interview about the upcoming version of FreeNAS. Now this is pretty cool. This is gonna be the 11.2 beta. Now the actual release is due on 7.9, but you can go to the nightlies and get a sneak preview. I'm gonna to wait to do any in-depth testing until the actual beta comes out but I wanted to at least uh, do a quick video and do a look at it. So essentially this is beta one, but it's not the official beta one, it's a nightly release. And a couple of the things I wanna talk about that they added here is replace Warden with IO cage, add cloud sync encryption support. This is actually the real exciting one. Uh, meltdown mitigation, I'm less worried about because I trust the software running in here, but it's good. Trust me, it's good to have that. I'm not trying to say don't bother, it's a waste of time, uh, but they are working on the uh, mitigations on that. So let's take a look at the dashboard. So by default now, and you could switch to the new UI with previous versions like the 11.1 series of FreeNAS, but it was pretty rough. And I never really used it because I didn't, I think I did a preview of it in a video, but it's not, I didn't think it was all that great. Uh, it had a lot of issues. They have really been working hard at this and it looks a whole lot better. They polished it up quite a bit. I like the first screen when you log in, you get your version, uh, it says master, it says the build date is uh, July 3rd, 2018. This is the FreeNAS 11.2 nightlies. Like I said, so this is not the version that's gonna come out on 7.9. As close to it as can be, um, I imagine they may have a couple commits that they have between now and Monday, uh, but for the most part, this is pretty much how the system's supposed to be looking. Now. Among the things I thought was interesting that uh, Chris had mentioned was some people like to see it in a uh, on a phone or a tablet, and it does work on a phone or a tablet, so you can manage your system from this. And I think the thing is, I'm used to always just using a computer to manage it, um, but it's definitely it takes a little bit longer to load. I think when it does this, but like I said, it could be that I'm running this in a VM, and that's just part of how that works. But uh, the layout without thoroughly getting into it does seem to work on the phone option here. Um, so kind of interesting. Uh, log out, restart, shutdown. I, I, that just worries me doing that from a phone. So we're gonna go back. It is responsive. It is a nice UI. It does have that option. We're not gonna do the demo like that. It's just, I thought it was interesting that they offered it. Now, this is a departure from the usual FreeNAS layout that all of us are so used to, where some menus are on the side and some are across the top. But I gotta admit, when you're trying to teach a new user that, I've been using it a long time, so it's easy, but for a new user, they're like, why are some menus on the top and some here? And I do like the consolidation of all the menus and the expanded dropdown so you can find things. Uh, everything in here looks pretty clean, looks pretty nice. They uh, have a nicer layout for just generally everything. I, I kind of like, especially when you're a prompt at the dashboard so you can see things like, you know, how the drives are doing. You can see the health of the drives and things like that. Pull tank healthy, nice green. I imagine it turns red. I don't have an unhealthy tank here to uh, uh, demo it, but the, the clean it's pretty clean. Now I noticed, and it's probably because it's a nightly, um, that these aren't showing up. I don't have any information in here, but I'm not too worried about it. I actually use net data for all of my uh, deeper diagnostics. It's integrated right into FreeNAS. I've done separate videos on it. You can load it on other servers. Services page. I like this too. The simple start, stop buttons, red and green. Just kind of a cleaner look. Like they've done a nice job on all this. Also because still you can get a lot of services in here. Um, nice to see that you can just filter it and it works really fast. It also has a couple different layout options. Slim or the kind of more what you may be used to, a tabular layout like this. So pretty cool. Sharing all that, mostly, you know, clean layout, that same common add the plus. I guess this is similar to the way Google added a lot of things. I see this in the Google dashboards, like that material design, uh, where you can browse the path, little drop downs, choose snapshot tasks if you have any assigned. I don't have any assigned to this, but, uh, but all the features seem to be there where you can add the features to the uh, objects and you can just check boxes. A little bit different than the you know side-by-side -side boxes where you gotta push them all over. So I do like all of this. Now, the one exciting thing about this is gonna be the cloud support, cloud credentials. Now I've talked about this before. So the system has an ability to support cloud syncing with storage providers uh, like AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Backblaze and Google Cloud. Now, 
Backblaze has really inexpensive storage. And it's a great place to store quite a bit of things. And a lot of people go, hey, I want to be able to sync all my data somewhere, but I don't know if I trust that provider. Fair enough. They have a solution for that. So I was going to work out a video, and I just never got around to doing it, of how you pre-encrypt everything, then you sync it to the cloud. The problem is that's kind of a pain in the butt to do. It'd be much better if it was one step. Don't worry. Free NAS people have this figured out. So I created just a test account that's not real. Uh, I'm going to go over here to TAS. I'm going to go to Cloud Sync TAS. We're going to go ahead and add one here. Test. Is it a pull or push? We're going to push data over to the cloud. We're going to choose Backblaze. I think it's going to fail on validation here. So we'll uh, wait for it to fail. And no problem. It does do a test to make sure that it's valid. You put the path in. If you want to sync the data, copy the data, it's got options there. This is the part that's exciting that's coming up. So we have set encrypt files before transfer to the store. That's pretty cool. So they're using our clone crypt. And they have all the documentation here on it of how it works. I'm going to do some reading in this. So I'm going to do a video on this once the beta is out and do some testing back and forth because I have a Backblaze account and test how good this works and how the encryption works and things like that. Uh, it also does encryption password and encryption salt. So I like that. That's definitely uh, handy because now I feel as though it's got good, strong encryption behind it. And I this is a feature that I've been wanting for a long time. Uh, be able to sync it and tell people, hey, you can sync it with the cloud, but you don't trust the cloud, so you can do this. Now, another nice advantage is if you're worried about this, because someone brought this up before about problems they've had with different cloud providers. I take everything with a grain of salt um, about people's stories about problems. Sometimes they are the problem. Sometimes a cloud provider might be a problem. So seeing, seeing a single story and saying, oh, I lost files with Backblaze because eh, there might be more to the story. Anyways, um, you can do this to multiple cloud providers. So if you don't have confidence in one, you can then choose another and at the same time and then cloud sync to both places. So that way you have the you know, three, two, one backup or you have it, a couple copies of it in two different cloud providers, both encrypted, and then you have a copy yourself. So it would take quite a global catastrophe for all of your data to go away. Um, that being said, this is one of the features that I'm pretty excited about. Now, the other stuff, I'm going to do some testing. I'm going to test it on real hardware so I can actually see the results as opposed to testing in a VM. Um, I have an old server that I have laying around that I'm going to load the beta on to do you know, some playing with all these things. And I'll do a couple of videos on it, of course, and show you how this is coming along. But I really like the way this looks. Now, a couple side notes. If you want to load this up and test it, I've already done this to this particular VM, but one of the prompts it has is, would you like to upgrade to the latest version of features for ZFS? It rolls up the ZFS to add extra features. The other side about that is you can't roll backwards to it. So if you do this to your main machine, you're going to be on this uh, beta because there's not a downgrade to my knowledge to roll it back. It's kind of a move the data, bring it all back. The other thing I want to point out is IO cage is in here. Now, IO cage is a replacement for the previous Warden Jails. Uh, it's the updated new version uh, that's in the new versions of FreeNAS. I'm not an expert on it. I'll do some digging into it. I know I have problems running this in a VM. Like I said, FreeNAS is not really ever designed to run a VM. It's designed to run on raw hardware. And I have some raw hardware I'm going to be testing this with so I can do some testing with IO Cage and with um, some of the other features that are supported on this. But overall, I really like it. Uh, it definitely is cool. I didn't want to do too in depth on it until I get around to uh, the actual beta, which comes out Monday, then I'll do some more videos, but definitely take a look at it. And as always, uh, if you find any bugs and things like that, that's why they our betas are open to the public like this is they want you to do some testing. And that's what I'm gonna be doing on a machine and doing some syncing with our other machine uh, to you know kind of run through his paces and see what works, what doesn't work and uh, fill out bug reports. And hopefully all will be, you know, perfectly smooth and we'll move to this version in production which I'm excited for so it does need a refresh on the on the layout for the web interface and this is a really nice job on the refresh here I think they're doing a great job it looks really nice um, other than this this is the nightly like I said other than this not working everything else seems to work perfectly fine I can't really do any testing until I put it on hardware but the VMs and jails but I'm hoping that the um, 
VMs have been updated some. I, I never found them to be great. That's why I haven't done a lot of videos on it. Uh, but they have really been working diligently at uh, enhancing the VMs. And I think it might be some cool solutions for like the things we do with Unify. We'd love to be able to run the Unify in a VM on a free NAS so we can have one box that has a massive amount of ZFS storage for like a camera system. That project's coming when I feel though this is all very stable. I'll show how to uh, get all that set up. I know you can run it in a jail. That comes with the pretty deep instructions as well. But I'm hoping with IO Cage uh, that gets even better as well. So uh, upcoming videos on that in the short term. This Definitely take a look at this. If you've got some extra hardware to load it on or a VM to play around with this and start filling up bug reports, check it out. This is the FreeNAS 11.1 beta slash nightly first look at it. Thanks. Oh, and if you want to go to the nightlies and, you know, if you're running like the stable version, you just go to uh, system, update, choose nightlies, check, and it'll show there's an update. You can install it. Uh, but don't do this on your production machine. Probably not the best idea. I mean, I like testing betas, but I'm going to test it on another machine, not my production one. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.